<laughs> Let me clearly and concisely repeat for the hard of hearing, that would be the New South Wales Deputy Police Commissioner, among others, what I said earlier this week and in my editorial in The Spectator Australia. Every Australian taxpayer now has on their conscience the terrifying prospect that their hard-earned dollars went towards financing the rape, the mutilation, torture, kidnapping and murder of innocent Jewish girls, women, babies, boys and men on 7th of October in southern Israel. That is in particular, that's the legacy of the disgusting recklessness of Labor's Penny Wong, who increased our funding of that organisation after it had been reduced by previous governments. The entire world now knows the extent of UNWA, that's United Nations Relief and Works Agency's links to terror. I've been warning and talking about this for years, so I won't go through it all again. Yet, Foreign Minister Penny Wong ignored all the warnings and went ahead and increased the amount of hard-earned Australian tax dollars to an outfit that, according to one piece of legal advice that I have seen by an eminent Australian KC, fits the definition of fostering terrorism. It's an outrage. What risk assessment was undertaken before those funds were reinstated? The idea that my and your tax dollars may have contributed in any way to the ongoing horror show of Hamas's October 7th barbarity and hostage taking is unacceptable. As an Australian taxpayer, I demand that Penny Wong resign. And as for the Gazan refugees being admitted into this country, that cannot be allowed to continue if there is even the slightest chance that a single one of those individuals has similar connections or affiliations with terrorism. I was pleased to see new New South Wales Senator Dave Sharma, the former ambassador to Israel this week, basically agreeing with me that Wong had ample warning about Hamas. And he calls her amateurish and accurately criticises Albanese, Albanese's astonishing lack of leadership. So let's be clear, this government, the Labor Albanese government, is a disgrace, in my opinion. And it's an opinion shared by increasing numbers of conservatives and other commentators, including those who were originally very generous in their praise and opinions of the Albanese team and Penny Wong. Take the Australian's Greg Sheridan, who in an excellent piece yesterday wrote of the increasingly dangerous world we live in, we now face, thanks to the threats of war posed by China, by Russia, by Iran and all their numerous proxies. So, to quote Greg Sheridan, in all of this, the danger he's referring to, the Albanese government has been a model of indolence, ineptness, incompetence and inattention. Far from building deterrence, as every US ally should be doing urgently, it's actually presiding over the catastrophic rundown of Australia's already minuscule military capabilities. We can't put all or even most of our old age pensioner Anzac frigates to sea because we don't have crews to man them. So we couldn't help in the Red Sea, for instance. We can't move our troops around any battlefield because we don't have helicopters, having decided bizarrely to bury them all, showing there are no limits to the folly of Australian defence policy. We cannot, confront, we cannot confront any military force no matter how ragtag, which has armed drones, because although we spend $50 billion a year on defence, we ourselves possess neither armed drones nor counter-drone capabilities. <sighs> that was Greg Sheridan. I spoke last year about the three eyes that def define the Albanese government, ideology, idiocy and incompetence. Greg has now added three more, indolence, ineptness and inattention. <coughs> And speaking of what is happening overseas, there's been hardly any mention in the mainstream media of the mayhem in European capital cities because of the revolutionary uprising of Europe's farmers, with protests spreading across France, Germany, Belgium, Italy, Holland, Spain, and Ireland, to name only a few places. Allow me to quote from an excellent piece in The Spectator by Gavin Mortimer, quote, from the Mediterranean to Normandy, farmers of cattle, sheep, chickens, and crops are demonstrating outside French prefectures and dumping hay in fast food restaurants and there in front of the Eiffel Tower. On Monday, they used tractors and bales of hay to blockade 
motorway is accessing Paris. Their resolve is unshakable. They will go to the bitter end, they say. Gavin goes on, European Union regulations are making farmers' lives a misery. Although they also blame bureaucrats in Paris for applying the rules so zealously, that's EU regulations, and red tape, and green tape. We can't even trim our hedgerows without permission, says one farmer, Patricia. Her land is scanned by drones. Yes, they're using drones to check up that her farm is complying with all the new environmental directives. Last year, this particular farmer was ordered to reduce her water usage by 30%. Being compliant has become a nightmare, she says, because of the administration. Shockingly, every two days, every two days in France, a farmer commits suicide. But what are these protests actually all about, I hear you say? Well, the article continues. All these incomprehensible measures are tied up in the EU's Green Deal, which was introduced in 2019 by the President of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen. The aim is for the EU, <coughs> the aim is for the EU to be climate neutral by 2050. The Global Farmer Network, an alliance of farmers from around the world, summarised the Green Deal as the EU's plan to eliminate modern farming in Europe, devised by bureaucrats with no understanding of the agricultural industries. Quote, in the next decade, farmers are supposed to slash their use of crop protection products by half cut application of fertiliser by 20%, transform a quarter of total farmland into organic, organic production. So there you have it. The very same climate-obsessed net zero at all costs, leftist political ideology that is driving Europe to the brink of revolution is the very same political ideology being pursued by Albanese and Chris Bowen and this Labour government. The only difference is Europe are a few years ahead of us. But make no mistake, this is where Australia is headed. And unless you, the farmers of Australia, take action now and get organised to vote this madness out and vote Bowen and Labor out of power, you can look forward to a future similar to that of Europe's farmers. You have been warned. Of course, the mainstream media only report all of this as far-right extremism and that sort of nonsense. The reality is very different. As in Australia, the farming community are among some of the most hardworking, generous, patriotic, caring, compassionate members of society, the salt of the earth, whose efforts we all rely on to eat. And guess what? Plenty of people know it. There's a great clip on Twitter where the cops at one of the protests in France, the cops themselves are busy handing out food and biscuits to the protesting farmers. They're on their side. Another clip, which is terrific, is where the police were chasing some particular farmer and the police get stuck in the mud in the farmer's field and the farmer comes along and helps them get out of the bog they've driven into. But the reality is, of course, that if the farmers are not farming and are instead blockading the cities, well, what's going to happen? Yes, the supermarket shelves are soon bare. That's what's happening all throughout Europe. And that is, of course, the inevitable outcome of climate-obsessed policies. Empty shelves. Again, Australia, you have been warned. And the irony? While European farmers are being forced off the land to tackle insane climate net-zero policies, like cutting down on carbon dioxide, well, to fight what? What the head of the United Nations calls global boiling? Well, <laughs> according to the Daily Skeptic, the rate of global greening caused by recent increases in atmospheric carbon dioxide has accelerated during the last two decades, according to new important findings recently published by a group of Chinese scientists. About 55% of global land mass revealed an accelerated rate of vegetation growth, compared with only 7.3% showing increased decline or browning. We are truly living in insane times. 
But here's the best bit. This is so great. I just have to share this with you. This week, Mount Isa was cut off due to heavy rains caused by the recent cyclone up in Queensland. It suffered, in other words, a major Tim Flannery rain event, which, of course, nobody predicted, except uh, people who know what's going on. But watch the following clip, which says everything you need to know about woke idiot corporations like Woolworths and the cult of sustainable, eco-friendly, fake meat food products. So have a listen. This guy went out, so the shelves, he went to his local Woolies, he wandered around his local Woolies, and uh, because of the heavy rains, the Tim Flannery stuff uh, that's fallen, <laughs> the bomb didn't predict it all, but anyway, many of the shelves were empty. So he wandered around, and let's have a look what happened. So I will get that clip for you. I'm sorry, we've got a technical problem, but it's a great clip. I'll try and play it for you later in the show. Now, we've been talking about what happened with those protests in Israel. Oh, we've got it now. Don't you just love it? Here we go. Have a listen. This guy is a legend. Have a watch. I'll show you something funny when uh, an outback town gets isolated. This is the fruit and veg and frozen food department at Woolies, Mount Isa because we're currently isolated at present. This is the meat department. OK, just wait for it. This is uh, in the frozen food department. It just gets better, just wait for it. And this is the pet food area. <laughs> wait for this, though. Plant-based <laughs> alternatives is chock as full. <laughs> so Woolies don't stock any Australia Day paraphernalia because it doesn't sell, but they try and cram woke garbage, plant-based, eco-environmental, climate change food down our throats and no one touches it, even when all the shelves are empty. What a legend that guy is. Mate, you can come on this show on Outsiders any time you like. <laughs>